How much runway do you need to take off? Today, I take the Stinson out to answer that question. Come fly along to see what I do to find the distance. Aviation, the way it was meant to be. I received a question from a fellow Stinson owner about whether he thought I could get his Stinson out of the airport. And I'm not going to tell someone whether they can get their airplane out of, a, uh, out of an airstrip. But, you know, it brings up a good question. How do you know if you can get your airplane out of an airstrip? Well, today I'm going to show you uh, how I've figured out whether or not I can get this airplane out of a uh, airstrip or a landing zone. Right, the mission today is to uh, answer some questions about getting in and out of short fields. We're not going to do it at a short field because I have uh, wet grass and, and just not a, a good time of the year to be running off field here. We had snow, it melted, it's mushy. Um, I'll do it at a paved strip. And these are the questions that a, uh, uh, a fellow YouTuber, Brad Rip, has sent to me. Tail up or tail down? Good question, we'll figure that out. Do you force the tail up or let it come up on its own? Should I use takeoff flaps on takeoff or should I pull flaps and then set takeoff flaps? Is there a significant difference between tail down takeoff and just letting it get on the ground, off the ground or, uh, or taking off getting in ground effect and then clearing the obstacle? Stinson 108 question first. What do I do with the 108? And then uh, the techniques that I use to see if I can get out of it, like he wants to get out of an 1,800-foot field with an obstacle on the end, which shouldn't be a problem in a Stinson. There's a book that tells you, you know, uh, take off distance over a 50-foot obstacle. First of all, I'm just going to go with sea level. Distance over a 50-foot obstacle, it is saying like 1,100 feet. Um, so I'm going to start with the book. We're going to figure out what the book tells me to do. It says climb at 80 we can make modifications from there. We definitely don't want to get, uh, you know, climb out at stall speed. We want to have margins that are safe if we're going to alter what the book says, which I don't recommend altering the book. The book is what we do. I'm sitting here on the uh, on the line. I'm going to use the short field style, and I'm going to uh, apply full power. I've got it. Release. There it is. Rotate up. There's my 80. I'm going to fly out at 80. Just like it says, I'm through the horizon. We'll be able to get a number. On a side note, the winds today are um, about 10 knots down the runway. So I'm getting a little bit of help on all of this, and it's nice. Oh, here we go. Apply power, it'll launch, lift the tail. When I get to the flying speed, pull it up in the air, climb out at 70.
This experimenting technique can be used in any plane to verify the book takeoff distances and to figure out pilot minimum distances. Flap set to takeoff. Pull the flaps to full. Rotate. Reduce them to climb. And then uh, climb out at, it's going to be with ground 70. All right, there we go. Climb out at 70, clear the trees. That was by far the quickest. I was up before the end of the numbers on that. I'm going to get the tail grazing just a few inches above the ground. We're going to let it roll up. I'm going to let the nose come down a little bit for ground effect so that I don't end up in a, in a high angle of attack, high drag situation. Uh, until I get to best climb, I'm going to use 70 again. Uh, and I'm going to climb out at 70. Luckily, I'll have some pretty good information on with the uh, using the UAvionics AV30 here. I want my best rates of climb and my altitudes are. I'll be able to see 100 feet, 50 feet. We'll be able to see all these numbers pretty easily. And then with timestamps on the video, we're going to be able to, you know, see time to climb and distances. This should be really good. So, uh, leave that open a little bit. So here we go. This one's going to be full power. And just let it kind of roll out. In the ground effect. I actually ended up going up to 80 on that one. We're out of here. Hopefully, uh, I hope that answers our questions here, Brad. We'll run the videos, we'll find out, and then we'll have, uh, we'll know. All right. Scooter back here at the studio to go over the results of the takeoff testing. And the conditions on the day, we had 48 degrees, 10 knot headwind, 140 knot density altitude. I was flying a Stinson 108-2 with 165 horsepower, loaded to 1,720 pounds, was flying a 49 pitch prop. I did multiple takeoffs of each dial and have averaged them. I showed the best results for each in the video. My rate of climb was around 1,000 feet per minute at 80 miles an hour. The slowest I climbed was 75, and that showed about uh, 1,100 feet per minute. Uh, the normal takeoff technique I'll use as a benchmark. That's let the tail fly off the ground, rotate at 60, climb out at 80. Uh, I had a 440-foot ground roll. 810 foot over the trees, and those trees were about 75 to 100 foot tall. So then we switched over to the tail high. That averaged 330 foot on the ground roll with 780 feet over the trees. Then we did the tail high pulling the flaps, and this averaged 245 feet on the ground roll with about 820 feet over the trees. And then uh, last, tail low. And uh, the average there was 282 feet ground roll with 670 feet over the trees. Now, just a couple comments. The tail high uh, was short over the treetop. And I think it's because the plane was fast enough that there was no need to accelerate after you got into the air. The asphalt helped out here. I'm not sure on softer fields uh, that would be the case. I also misjudged the takeoff and bounced the tail on one. This skewed the results quite a bit. Uh, the average without that takeoff was 290 feet on the ground roll and 690 feet over the trees. Didn't change its position in the listing, but it's a downfall of that tail high technique. If you pull early, it's going to increase your ground roll. A uh, tail high with flaps was great on the ground roll. 
Uh, up to the trees, it was a little longer. And maybe that's because you need to accelerate in the air and the movement is a bit more complex than the flight deck causing pilot inefficiencies in the first 100 feet or so. I was surprised how much shorter the ground roll was. And then it turned out to be the longest over the trees. So it's great for a stole show. Um, though this might not be the case on soft fields, it might work well where uh, acceleration on the ground isn't as quick as it is on asphalt. And then tail low. Uh, this was the most consistent with the ground roll within five feet of each other. And also it was the most consistent over the trees with the shortest average. It doesn't feel like you're doing well as the controls are sloppy off the ground. Yet in the end, it was the most consistent and it worked really well. Where does this leave me as a short takeoff? Well, uh, I'm not going to take off with trees 800 feet in front of me and just <laughs> run my wheels through them. Uh, you need to add a, a margin of safety. 50% uh, is, I consider, a minimal margin. So with my airplane, I see I'm somewhere between 7 and 800 feet. I'll go to 800 feet. I'll add 50% of that, and then uh, on a cool day with a light headwind, I might consider 1,200 foot uh, over the trees. You know, if I had a takeoff roll of 1,200 feet and I had to clear some trees, realistically, 14 or 1,500 would be my number with the Stinson on a cool day with a light headwind loaded to about 1,700 pounds. Uh, while we can figure out the minimum distance, we always have to put margins in for safety. All right. I hope this helped. And, uh, and thanks, Brad. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching the video. I think I answered all those questions for Brad. <laughs> We're going to... We're going to answer them. I think I'm going to end up having to do uh, some studio work on this one to make sure they're there. But this should be a fun video. At least I got some content. I love it. Thanks for the questions. Thank you for PMing me. Um, Scooter Stinson on Facebook if you're interested. Um, you know, I'm always looking for ideas. Leave it here in the comments on the, on the video. If you have an idea for a video or there's something you want to know, I might not know the answer. As in this case, I had some suspensions and... I've got some numbers, but go out and try it, and I, I would love to try it for any one of you guys. If you want to know something about how, they, how these airplanes fly, um, I, it doesn't have to be Stinson specific, but what's going to work the best, you let me know. I'll go out and I'll tell you how it works for this airplane. Um, I'm always looking for a reason or an excuse to go fly.